Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back. In this screencast, I'm going to show you how to create a program that will read uh, input from a file rather than from the keyboard. So we know how to create a program using Scanner to read in input from the keyboard, but what if I have like a Word document or a text document on my computer and I want to read from that? Um, you can do that with Scanner as well. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new project. I'm going to call it, what should I call it, uh, file IO project. IO stands for input output, in case you were wondering. I'm going to create a new class. New class, let's call it file IO prac for practice. I'm going to include main and finish. Okay, I'm going to move these comments so that I can get started. Okay, so the syntax for scanner is exactly the same as it was before. I'm going to type in scanner. I'm going to call it eyes, because I like eyes. And make it equal to new scanner. And then inside a system.in. Alright, so what this does... Wait, let me import this guy. This package. Okay, great. So now, this says that I have a scanner called eyes that's going to read from the system, which is the keyboard. System.in. Okay? But like I said, what if I had a text document that I want to read from instead of the keyboard? I can do that by using the file class. So I'm going to create a new object, a file object called uh, the file. Again, you can call it whatever you want. New file. And then inside parentheses, you put the name or path of the file uh, located on your computer. So I'm going to create a file called input.txt. Or well, you know what? Let's call it words. Words.txt. Okay. Let me import this package so that it can work. So now what this does is we created a file object called the file, and it's pointing to a document on my computer that's in the same directory as file io prac um, called word.txt. Okay, I can put in a path to a different file, or I could put, um, you know, a, a Word document even. But I'm going to stick to words.txt, and then now I have my scanner eyes that will read from the file. So instead of system in, I'm going to put the file, which means every time I read something, it's going to read from the file, which is word.txt. Now, what Eclipse allows me to do is. Um, or it's complaining because I don't have an exception. So it's going to throw an exception in case it doesn't find the file. But we know it's going to be there. But in case the file doesn't exist or for some reason it's corrupt, it's going to throw an exception. We'll talk about exceptions later. But anyways, um, I'm going to go to my workspace folder. And here's my project folder. And here's my source code for the project I'm working on. Um, file IO prac. So if I go ahead and open that, it's going to show me exact same code that I'm working on. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and create a text document called words.txt. And inside, I will type um, a sentence, a group of tokens. So I'll say, I don't know, uh, blubby cheese makes you Blubby. I don't, even, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> so blubby cheese makes you flubby. That's the um, uh, that's the string that I'm going to, or that's the the input that I'm going to be reading from. So I'm going to save that. And so words.txt has that in it. So anytime I ask um, eyes to read, it's going to read one token from this document. And a token is any group of characters separated by space. So blubby is a is a token, cheese is a token, makes is a token, use a token, and flubby is a token. Okay. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and see how that works. So I'm going to type in string. I'll call it uh, word w r d, and I'm going to make it equal to eyes dot next. And what eyes dot next does is uh, it reads the next token from words dot txt. And so, so if I print it, it should print, uh, what's the first word again? Blubby? Blubby, yeah. So let me save that. And let us 
does run it. Let me bring this up so you can see what's going on. Right click, run as, Java app. Boom, it says Blubby. So it read in the first word from my uh, file, words.txt. Um, so if I do it again, let's say I do syso, and instead of saving it inside of a variable, I'm just going to say eyes.next. It's going to return the next word, which should be cheese. So blubby cheese. I'll just keep doing it over and over and over until I'm done with the whole file. I think that's it. Run it. Okay, so let's look at what happened here. It did eyes.next and it printed it returned blubby. So it printed blubby cheese makes you flubby. At that moment, my eyes are at the end of my uh, document, at the end of this file. There's no more tokens. So if I call next again, it throws an exception because there's no other token left within that um, what you would call it, within that document. So now to protect myself from crashing, I can always say eyes dot has next. And what that's going to do is going to return true or false whether there is a next token or not. So if I run this, it's going to say false because after flubby, right? After flubby, where is flubby? After flubby, there are no more tokens. Okay. Had I put this has next thing here, let's copy this and pasted it here, it would print true because it, it says blubby cheese makes you true there are more tokens left there's one more token flubby so then it prints flubby and then a false because there's no more tokens uh, that's really it there's not much to it so you use scanner like you would normally but instead of system dot in you're gonna put in the name of the file object that you created and when you when you create the file object make sure you put the name of the document that you're trying to look through within quotes or the path to it um, that's it. Goodbye.